I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Nate. And welcome back to Rob and Nate Record a Podcast. This is week three of our Kate Blanchett theme month. And for this week's selection, we watched the... 2006. 2006 movie, The Good German. The Good German. Der Gut Deutschlander. That is a really crappy German translation of yeah. The Good German. This film is directed by Steven Soderbergh. Mm-hmm. Do you know a lot about him? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a film that is based on a novel by a man named Joseph Cannon, who I guess writes kind of thrillers, kind of espionage things. Okay. And it is done in the style of a film from the period in which it is set. This is set in July and August of 1945 in Berlin around the Potsdam Conference. The war in Europe is over, but the war in Japan rages on. It is directed very purposefully in the style of the director Michael Curtiz, who was a great workman director at the time. He's best known for Casablanca. He's directed more Norish films like uh, Mildred Pierce. He did Angels with Dirty Faces, and he did one of your favorite films, White Christmas. And it is... I mean, it's very evocative of his style. It's it's in black and white. Uh, you got a lot of studio backdrops sets. They were able to a use green like, screen, footage. which they couldn't obviously use at the time. But yeah, they incorporate the period stock footage. You know, you have the old Warner Brothers shield at the beginning, the way the credits are presented, the way the whole thing is shot. Though there are certain things in this film that you could not have gotten away with in 1945, including use of the F word and some. Fairly, some sex scenes that simply you could not have done during the era of the production code. You probably could have implied elements of it, but you couldn't have. There are things here that you could definitely have implied or would have been implied at the time and not shown. Yeah. Steven Soderbergh is an actor who really is interested in playing with styles and structure. So I can see the appeal to him to make a film that is mimicking these earlier films. Uh, Soderbergh, of course, is best known for films such as Sex, Lies, and Videotape, uh, the various Oceans uh, movies from the early aughts. Is he the director of those? Yeah, he's the director of those. Logan Lucky. Uh, He's uh, he's also known for for making things quick and cheap. Hmm. He doesn't always do that. But that was kind of a, a trademark of his. This one, I assume, was not quick and cheap. No, I would not. No, it was not. And I'm he sure did Logan Lucky too. Yeah, yeah, Logan huh. Lucky. I mean, I knew I knew the name, but I yeah. couldn't. And he produces a lot of stuff too. Yeah, it's the first time that I saw it. It's the first time that you've seen this. Jim. Yes. Your wife thought that maybe you'd seen it, but nothing rang no. rang a bell when we were watching it. What did you think of the Good German? It's pretty heavily stylized. And I would actually say probably over-stylized. I'm not sure I understand the appeal of telling this story quite the way they do. I don't know how faithful this is to the adaptation of the novel, any of that type of stuff. Most of my questions coming out of this film are about the choices in how to do this. And Like, why make this film this way? Why make this story this way? Why make it you know, a noir film? Why make it... Black and white, why make well, it... I, th- I, th- I think that the book that it was based on was almost beside the point. I, I have the feeling that Soderbergh wanted to make a film in this style, and he found a property that he could develop in this style. Uh-huh. But I don't think the story was really his principal concern. I, I think it was the black and white and the, the period setting and having the old Warner Brothers shield at the beginning. There was a number of jokes I wanted to make during this film uh, one thing that kind of one thing that kind of stands out to me have you read any of the Bernie Gunther novels I'm aware of them that's the cop in Germany yes yeah back in the day it's interesting that the German detective is Gunther and the Leland Orscher who is you know the prosecutor guy mm. is Bernie indeed so there might be a I didn't know if that was homage, perhaps. Uh, I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Is that like intent? Is there something there? But as I watched the, those two, I couldn't help but think of Bernie Gunther. Mm-hmm. You know, and I haven't read the whole series, but I've read several several of the books in that series. 
So, yeah. So the story has uh, George Clooney playing Jack... Jake Geismeyer. Geismeyer. And he is in a uniform, but he's really just a reporter. He, he's a war correspondent. War correspondent for the New Republic. Are you familiar with the New Republic? No. But he, they keep calling him Captain. Yeah. So he... Yeah. I thought he was a military war correspondent. So yeah, that he was so, in the military. Well, he but. talks about that the the uniforms mostly for joke for show, or the uniforms basically a joke. Okay, you know everybody seemed to have been in the armed forces at this time, regardless of what they were doing. But the New Republic grew out of the progressive movement of the nineteen teens. It was definitely a left wing uh, magazine, and I think they they make a couple jokes about that here. About them not kind of taking him seriously or thinking that he might be a little too pro Soviet. But he comes over to a report on the Postam conference. He is assigned Tully, played by Toby Maguire, to be his driver. And he's mostly a black marketeer. Yeah, principally that. And Toby, or Tully, is having a relationship with uh, Lena Brandt, played, played by, by Kate Blanchett, mm-hmm, who also happens to have been an ex lover of Jake's. Yes. So we have a... Because Jake was in Berlin pre-war. Prior to the war, as a And then went to London for the war. Mm. This love triangle element in post-war Berlin, very reminiscent of a uh, Billy Wilder film. And I know the first film you think of is One, Two, Three, with its... Uh, I made a joke about it, but yeah. Setting in 1961-ish Berlin, but he made a film earlier called A Foreign Affair in 1948, which is about a congresswoman from Iowa, from the Iowa 8th District, played by Jean Arthur, who travels over to Berlin several years after the war on a fact-finding thing about troop morale. And she ends up in a love triangle uh, with John Lund, who's her liaison officer, and John Lund is secretly dating Marlena Dietrich. Kate Blanchett in this movie is basically playing Marlena Dietrich, a Marlena Dietrich type. In fact, I cast the principal three actors in this film. If this film were to have come out in 1945, and of course Blanchett would be played by Dietrich, George Clooney's role would be played by Joseph Cotton, and Tobey Maguire's role would be played by Robert Walker. You know Robert Walker best as the guy that suggests let's murder each other's people we want murdered in Strangers on a Train. But at this point in his career, he was playing all sorts of kind of gee golly, earnest young soldiers. And so casting a young Tobey Maguire, again, this is 2006, from the Spider-Man era. And, you know, there's certain expectations which come with Tobey Maguire on screen, but the guy who plays is kind of a bad And... I was surprised how quickly he was killed off. I was too. Because he's one of the big three. He's on the poster, big name. You assume, you kind of assume you know where this is going. But yeah, he's killed by uh, Soviets. When you first saw the Russians down on the bank of the river, Mm -hmm. you know, is that what you expected? No, I no. Yeah. 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 The movie was actually still pretty good, like pretty. You were still wondering where it was going at that point. As it gets a little bit further, you you know, I, I guess the movie keeps you guessing the whole way through to a certain extent because it takes a lot of twists and turns. Yeah, but at but the, the same time. There comes a certain point where the twists and turns are less effective because they've taken so many twists and turns. Well, and there's also, like, like what else could it be about? So, Mar- uh, I'm thinking of Dietrich. Kate Blanchett says early on about her husband has a brain full of numbers. It's like, I have numbers, so he's, he's a scientist. So of course, he turns out to be a rocket scientist. And the Soviets want, the Americans want him because they want rocket scientists for their program because the, they already know that the Cold War is coming. And the Soviets want to either get him or stop him from going away with the Americans. And so this is part of what in the film they call Operation Overcast. But in reality, it was Operation Paperclip, which was the... Uh, American efforts to get many a Nazi scientist out. Especially the rocket scientists. Especially the rocket scientists to work on our defensive and offensive and later space programs, Werner von Braun being the best known example. Yeah, though for a long time we avoided allowing them to participate in the space program. Mm-hmm. Werner von Braun, like initially, was assigned to the Army and was helping with the munition. Well, yeah, anyways, some of them were assigned that way. Werner von Braun actually wasn't. 
but they limited their involvement because they didn't want the accusations. Like there was a big effort to avoid crossover between military and civilian rocket use mm. for a long time here in the U.S. And that eventually went away. But, yeah. yeah. You haven't asked me what I thought of this movie. What did you think of this? On what are your first impressions? The of this? good German is a is the bad movie. I did not care for this. I was bored by it. I could tell on 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 paper this is something I should like because I like these kind of movies from this era. But it was just pure imitation, and it wasn't a particularly deep or interesting imitation. One thing I did like was the the quality of of the film is not great. Like, it's not a crisp. It looks like something you'd have watched on a VHS tape of an old movie from the 1940s. And it's really, the story is really pretty. It's just there. I actually liked the first half of this movie. Mm -hmm. But towards the end, it takes so many twists and turns. Like, when I was taking notes. So when they go to the safe house, and it's empty, Mm -hmm. and then there's the confrontation there, and Lena gets shot, and they go out into the town square, and... Gunther kills Emil, and then Lena and Jake stumble on you know onto the scene, mm-hmm. and Lena collapses on top of him. I actually wrote in my notes, Lena dies, mm-hmm. but then Lena's alive. Lena's alive, yes. You and know, then, it's just they just overplay their hand on all of these twists and turns. They do that shot because they work their way into a crowd that's applauding at uh, a parade and dignitaries there for the Potsdam co- conference, and so. It gets really crowded, and they do some interesting camera angle things that is not Michael Curtiz. It's totally Orson Welles, that part. And and there's another film that this reminded me of, a far superior film, which is part of where the Joseph Cotton casting comes in my 1945 version, is a film called Third Man from 1949, uh, which has to do with occupied Vienna, and it has to do with the underground and uh, smuggling and uh, it's a wonderful looking film. It's very it's, it's a classic film that you should see if, if you have not seen it. And that's one of the problems of this film is it just reminds me of better films. Uh-huh. Which is a kiss of death to a movie for me. So again, I just thought this was pure imitation. I was bored with it. I didn't really care about anybody or anything in it. I'm giving it a big old thumbs down. Are you? Yeah, I'm giving it a one and a half stars. Oh, you're jumping real and far and fast. Four. Ahead. No, I just even say three on the ten star scale. Seriously? Yeah, I did not. You like really, it. really disliked this. Yeah, movie. I disliked it. I did not dislike this as much as you. Like I said, I actually liked the first half. The first half had me following along, wondering what was going on, where it was going, what Lena's real thing was, what the the back connections to Tully were, things like that. The second half just overplays. Everything. Did you care about anybody? In the first half? Mm Mm-hmm. In the first half, I cared about Lena. I cared about Jake. I didn't care about Tully. Mm -hmm. I was intrigued by Muller. Actually, I liked Danny all the way through the movie, Uh the bartender. Okay, yeah, Danny. Danny, likable enough guy. Yeah. Because it's kind of Bo Bridges had two scenes, basically. He had three. He had three scenes. Yeah. Yeah. But... It was interesting because his name's Muller, but they pronounce it basically M- Muller mm-hmm. in this. And so yeah. we had to make jokes. Yeah, I just kept talking about, why are you talking to Muller? It's like, yeah, that's that's kind of a, this is a big phrase not many years ago. Now, this movie, it looks like it had a estimated budget of $32 million. Do you know how it did in the box office? It did really poorly. It did really, really poorly. It appears to have had an opening weekend in the U.S. of a mere $76,000. It had a U.S. domestic gross of $1.3 million. Do you know what its worldwide gross was? Around $6 million. Yep, $5.9 million. So this made a back a small failure. fraction of its budget, yeah. which is intriguing considering it's it's cast like you would have figured 2006 you're putting George Clooney Kate Blanchett in a, in a theater and you're only going to make six million dollars that's people that's, were turned off by the black and white and kind of the, the already conceded the thing yeah I don't know yeah it's, I still it's would think you put project. George Clooney and Kate Blanchett in a theater mm-hmm. you're gonna the expectation is to make more than six million dollars yeah yeah one would uh, one would expect yeah 
A movie also critically uh, mixed to bad, uh, 34% on Rotten Tomato, 49% Metacritic, and a 6 out of 10 on the IMDb. Yeah. I would probably... I actually think that the 6-star rating is, is okay on this. You gave your ratings. I hadn't given mine. I don't dislike this anywhere near as much as you. I don't think your one and a half on the four star scale is is very far off, but on the ten star scale, I'd give this at least a five, maybe a six. I don't think that the six star rating on IMDb is. It makes sense to you. Yeah, it doesn't seem unfair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think we found a movie that that I liked less than the missing. Uh, I liked this less than the missing, which is a mediocre movie. I found some interesting trivia that might uh, be worth of noting for you. All right. There's a bunch of trivia on here about how this was shot and Steven Soderbergh's thoughts on in ways in which he was shooting it, things about camera lenses, things like that. Mm. I'm not interested in those ones. Yeah. Again, this is coming from the IMDb trivia, se- the trivia section of IMDb. Kate Blanchett studied Marlene Dietrich and Ingrid Bergman in order to play a German character. Ingrid Bergman, however... Was Swedish. Yes. The movie poster, as you mentioned, is an homage to a poster for the classic Warner Brothers film, Casablanca, as is the closing scene at the airport. Yeah, very much so. Soderbergh wanted to shoot this in black and white, but had to shoot it in color because of the effects used in the driving scenes. Oh. David Holmes composed a complete score for this film, which was rejected. Hmm. The score that is in this is fine. Like, like it takes many of the period flourishes that you, that you were here at that time. Like, it was a good, generic 1940s score. Yeah. Kate Winslet was once previously linked to the female lead in this. Okay. Once or twice in the film, adverts for personal washing powder are seen before Lena gets her personal shine. I don't know what that reference, the second reference is, but... And as I mentioned before, the quality of the film is not great. I, I like how parts of it are overlit. Yeah. Which you would see in, in films of, of that period, where they're just almost bleached a couple of times in the yeah. nightclub. This uh, trivia item is a little bit of a deep cut for you. Are you All ready right. for this? Mm-hmm. When Geismar checks Lena's file in the records archive at the military government headquarters, he discovers only a note in the folder saying the file has been sent to Overcast. Operation Overcast was the U.S. Army's 1945 operation to bring German scientists, such as Werner von Braun, and their families to America following the end of the war. It was later renamed Operation Paperclip. Oh, okay. How about that? So that's a little bit of a... Yeah. That's all that I'm going to pull out of that. So... There are a few uh, good quotes in this movie. I'm not going to go look them up, but there are a few good lines. The one that comes top of mind is Lena's comment about how an affair has more roles than a marriage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Any other thoughts on this movie? No. You really just want to get this over with because you didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy it. It was, I remember what came out and being really kind of intrigued by it. Uh And I don't know if I had seen it in a theater in 2006 probably would have enjoyed it more because of where I was in 2006 but yeah this this I mean it's an experiment I always kind of admire somebody taking risks and making an experiment but this this is a failed one yeah okay well I'm Rob and I'm Nate and this is Rob and Nate record a podcast you know that song's alternate title though right I know what the synchronized nerd dancing song because uh-huh. of the music video yes indeed yeah strange sounds Interesting waveforms. It's my responsibility. You know, they use the term boom operator to refer to a sound guy, but it could just as easily be used to refer to an explosives guy. You, you want to host? Or I host. You host. Me host. Yes. All right. I was going to make some kind of transubstantiation host joke, but I just couldn't, couldn't think of one in time. Transubstantiation yeah. host, host joke. joke. Yeah. So I don't know anyone Catholic. else who would have strung those <laughs> sequence of words together. You know, well, that's late in the movie. Yes. I know it's late in the movie. But you said you liked it early in the movie. I said I liked the first half, okay. and then I said that the second oh, half okay. overplayed the twists and turns. Okay, yeah. And so I was saying 
I was using as an example this scene because, like, so Gunther kills Emil, and once again, Nate is yelling in my loft at 10 p.m. I am. Uh, 